find the... This uh, is Lives We Live, episode 14-81, January 6, 1981, and the take is one. And now, join us for The Lives We Live. I, mean, I just can't believe that they can do this. At, at Jack's house, I know they don't do this. They always clean off the stuff, and they always put it in the dishwasher before they leave for school. It's like, they take advantage of me. I mean, really. Well, why he, do you let them do that, Nancy? If, if, they, if, if your boys can listen to their father, and if he has different expectations, which they live up to, then I think you should do the same thing. My problem, I admit, my problem, because I always thought it was my role as the mother to take care of everybody and make sure everything's done for them. But now, since Jack is living in his house and they're spending so much time at his house, it's like he demands that they absolutely have to help them around him around the house. And it, they're used to me doing everything around the house. So it's like when they come over here, it's a complete change, and they take advantage of me totally. And, and now I'm getting fed up with it. And so now I'm really demanding that they do more, more like Jack, but I still get caught up in that little yeah, vice the back in the forest. Yeah. Well, it's you know, like a zoo when they come back over here through my house. They really almost unload all their anger or frustration or whatever on me. Well, Victor doesn't do this, but it is different. When he goes to his father's house and then when he comes home, he'll say things like, um, well, I can go downstairs and I can stay downstairs until it's dark because my father will let me do that. How much time does he spend at Victor's house? Well, our arrangement is similar to yours, but I'd say he's about 40% of the time with his father and 40% of the time with me and 20% with the grandparents. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's almost like a 50-50. Yeah, we had that. The boys were really roughly about three and a half days with each one of us, basically. That's what it is. And, and it's just that when Jack, when they're at Jack's house, he really expects them to definitely take responsibility in the house. There's more the structure. Laundry, more structure, yeah. much more. They have to do the laundry, sweep floors, they do the bathrooms, they do everything. It's like, it's it's, I'm floored that they can do it. I mean, I'm, I'm delighted that they can do it and then I say why don't I do that but it's like I don't have that working for me I mean I don't instill it, it. it's the difference Nancy but I, I think you know as divorced parents and we both are to think about what are the expectations and the rules in daddy's house and what are the expectations and the rules in mommy's house and Victor will test me and he will try it and and he'll say things he'll say well my father says I don't have to do that or I don't do it at my father's house that's what he'll say I don't have because that I don't have that they don't they don't use Jack and I Oh, well, Victor's more lenient, and I tend to be the one who's more disciplined and more structured. Wow. But I've told you, you know, I've told you about Victor, and you're going to meet Victor I, Senior I'm today. Delighted, because yes. I'd like to talk with him. I'm yeah. glad he's coming shortly. But, you know, getting back to what I do, I am much more lax with the boys. Yeah. And much more like, well, it's okay, and we'll get it done when it's necessary to get it done. And you don't want to do it now, we'll do it later. At the commercial, Mom, fine. At the commercial, Jack doesn't do that. Now. I say now, it's done. And you don't know how they can move so fast. fast it's yeah. fantastic. He also expects them to spend less time in front of the TV, read more books, and, and do more work. And he structures their time, and they go play racquetball, and they do lots of things. He, he's constantly doing and programming them, whereas one, I am two, much more... three, four, yeah. I, I'm much more like just take it as it comes type thing. Yeah. I don't know. Well, do you structure Victor's life? At I'll, I'll tell you something, Nancy. In my own, looking back in my own childhood, my mother and father were like you. When I say that, my mother would go along and she'd say, well, you don't have to make up your bed. Or I'd say, Mom, I'm rushing out now. And there was a bottom line that I had to do, a minimum. Yeah. But it was usually the minimum that I did. And I, I think that if, you, if we really listen to each other, we, maybe we're doing the opposite of our parents. I'm, I don't know how your parents reared you. My mother didn't make me work around the house too much. My mother did a lot of that. But what she did make me do is to really, she would structure how I did my homework and how I worked in school mm -hmm. and how I performed in school. That's where my mother put all the pressure and the structure on And you're just the perform. opposite almost. And I am. I, it's like their homework is their responsibility. If they don't get it in on time, that's their responsibility. Oh, God, no. Oh, I could absolutely. never do that. Oh, no. Hey, no I can't see, keep track of four no. boys. <laughs> but I will say to, to Victor, I will say you have this to do, you have that to do, and if you don't 
do this on Wednesday. If you have a book report to write, then don't even come to me on Friday and say, well, can I watch television or can I stay up late? I am definitely the Hi. opposite of Hi, my Hi. parents. Hi. 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 No, you're going to meet Charlie. Victor. Charlie Everybody's Charlie. anxious to meet Victor's <laughs> father. You will get a chance to meet him. But we were talking about the differences and the expectations and what the children do at Daddy's house and what the children do at Mom's Do Linda house. and her ex-husband want the same things for their son? We'll meet Victor Terry and find out when we continue with The Lives We Live, the true life stories of three New York area women. Joyce Spector's an experienced New Yorker. She and her husband share a special partnership in their love and in their business. Joyce balances city life with the simplicity she finds at her country cabin. The most important hours in Linda Terry's life are spent with her son. She's also a graduate student at Columbia and an executive in adoption services. But first, she's Victor's mom. Nancy Tide lives in Westchester with her four sons. Facing single parenthood after divorce, she's raising her family while struggling for her own independence. Nancy, Joyce, and Linda share true and intimate experiences with each other. Real conversations touching the lives we live. Victor's here. Hi, Victor. Is, how are you doing? Yeah, Victor. I'm Nancy Tig, and this is Joyce you. Spector. Hello. Of course, nice you know Linda. Oh, I think pleasure. I do. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Oh, too well. So Why don't you sit over there? Yeah. You know, Victor. Glad you came. Um, just before you arrived, we were talking about our expectations for our children, and you know Nancy's divorced, and what exists between the differences of mothers and fathers. And I know, and you know, there's a difference between us. Well, I'd like to know what your <laughs> expectations are for your son, who, by the way, looks so much like you. <laughs> Sometimes like his mother. Yeah? Uh, you want to know what I expect of Victor? Yeah. Expectations. Well, in a word, happiness. Um, I don't try to structure Victor life at all. I think Linda does that more than I do. In terms of um, sports and uh, ensuring that he's happy. I don't really care what Victor turns out to be as long as he's not involved in drugs or homosexual uh, tendencies or um, he's not selling pencils and on the street and that kind of thing. Um, what he wants to be, I'm for it, whatever he wants to be. For example, I said once that I wanted Victor to be in sports and uh, get away from the doctor and the lawyer bit. Uh, I think Linda may prefer that kind of thing. 
But the other day I went to the doctor for five minutes and he charged me $42, so I said maybe you should be a doctor. <laughs> I don't know. But were your feelings always different, even from when um, Victor Jr. was born, about what you envisioned for your child? I don't know that they're really different, because I think ultimately we have the same objective, to see that Victor is happy. I personally think that Victor is going to be rich. He's going to be the first rich charity. And I don't, don't know how he's going to get there, what the means are going to be. And I don't think she's opposed to that. So I don't know. Do we really differ? Yes. How? Well, no. I, from what I've seen, I mean, I haven't seen you around Victor Jr., but she's a tough mother. Oh, you mean in terms of that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, very like structured. Oh, yeah. I, I believe in structure. And the mere fact oh, of what you say, you don't know how he's going to get there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he's going to get there either. And you okay. have to have that margin for he might win a lottery. But I hope to put Victor Jr. on a course that the ultimate goal is okay. millionaire or, you know, success. In, in, in this society's terms, and oh, I'm gonna yeah. put him on a course there, and I think his father is far more lenient. Yeah, in that sense, she's right. For example, um, I lean more towards preparing Victor for college. Then the leans to a good foundation, no, education. I'm not opposed to that, but I think she pushes Victor too much. Uh, I think ultimately it's gonna be good for him, so I don't object too much, but he's constantly hitting the books, and I'd rather see him playing football or baseball. I thought when we first got married, <laughs> that I was going to be the one to uh, discipline Victor more than Linda. But it turns out that... Uh, I'm the disciplinary. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm more of a... I guess Victor's my best friend, more yeah. than just being a father. He's really my best friend. And I don't think that... He can say things to me that he cannot say to Linda. For example, Victor calls me meathead. He doesn't call me father. <laughs> and I call him meathead. <laughs> I think we talked about this <laughs> once before. Yeah, I call him meathead. See, I, I, I think friendship is nice in children. And again, when you say expectations, and we've been kind of kicking this around for yeah. a while, I think uh, um, I'm mother first and I'm friend second. I am not friend first okay. and mother second. Yeah. And to me, that is, is just the way I believe. And yes, Victor can come to me, but we will never be such friends, even when he's an adult that he's free to, let's say, use profanity. I don't do that now in, my, in front of my mother, and I'm an adult. I don't feel so close to her and chummy. I don't call my mother by her first name, and I'm an adult. To me, she's mother first, and then a friend. And that's what I've instilled, yeah. and I so think we differ. you totally different behavior from Victor. He, I hear, I see, at least, you just want Victor to be, to be relaxed and kind of just your buddy type thing. Kind of laid back. And you really want Victor to perform. Is yeah. That, is it, would that oh, really? I want him to perform too, but well, I don't I, apply pressure. Well, perform according to what she wants him to do. Yeah, but let's get back to Victor Jr. What kind of an effect do you think that this will have on him if he spends approximately half his time with each of his parents separately, yeah. and their attitudes about his, you know, upbringing and their style is obviously different. I mean, are you going to have a schizophrenic <laughs> child? Or I don't is think this it's going to have any effect on him because we do that now, and Victor's very happy. For example, if Linda tells Victor to do something, she'll tell me and I'll reinforce it, whether I'm for it or not. We mm -hmm. don't try to get any conflict involved at all. Now, I may think that he's studying too much. I would not tell him that. I would tell Linda that. And she would communicate that to him. Uh, I, think, I think basically we both have Victor at heart. and I think we worked together on that over the years. And um, even though I may disagree, I won't tell Victor, I'll tell her. I think presenting the unified front with your boys, okay, they come home, the behavior changes, but I'm not so sure that you're in agreement with what Jack does. I, well, I guess I really respect Jack's ability to be able to command that they perform for him, and I am not able to do that, nor do I really want the, the terribly demanding way that he wants them to perform. He has a great deal of love for them and a great deal of respect for them, but he also has higher demands on performance than I do. And I much more want the relaxed attitude, and I want them to feel free to come to me with their anger and tell me when they're frustrated or disappointed. And that's more important for me than it is for them to obey blindly or to obey Mm, so angry I have to do it, you know? I don't want him to do that. I want him to say, Mom, I really don't want to do that. And then consequently, I have a problem because they allow the, that, that anger out. I allow that and, and kind of enforce yeah. Which that. kind of a household do you think that children are happier in? Because you and your husband, you know, are, it's very comparable, even though it's opposite mm -hmm. in how mm -hmm. you deal with them. Um, 
do kids like that kind of structure, or do they like a buddy as a parent? I mean, I... I don't know what they like, but I know that they function well in my house, and they function well in Jack's house. Right. And I think, because Jack and I never use the boys as pawns. We never use them, and I don't hear you doing either, mm -hmm. e that either. We never are telling the kids what's wrong with their father, or Jack's not telling the kids what's wrong with me, and they are never used to say, your mother's wrong, or your dad's wrong. That's never, never happening. Then they can... I think that they can know what my rules are and what I will allow. They also know what Jack will allow when he demands, and they act accordingly. But you know, Joyce, you asked that question, and a lot of people say that, and my own feeling is, yes, the rules might be somewhat different and lax in Victor's father's house, somewhat more structured in my house, and the same with you, but that's life. And I think in preparing a child, that's what parenting is about, preparing a child for life. You go to your office, you act one way, you leave the office, you go to a cocktail party, you act another way. You leave there and you have to go to a birthday party with a family, family members, you act another way. That you have to make adjustments in life, and this is not so traumatic. Yeah, but what it's happens if Victor Jr. ever had to make a choice? I mean, what happens if he, if he would want to live with you and not you? Oh, I mean, he made a choice recently, and he wants to spend half the time with her and half of me. It's no problem. I don't think it would be very much different if we were married. Um, when we were married, yeah, uh, there was... For example, uh, when we differences. were married, I took Victor and I would go away with him when he was three and four years old. And I'd do certain things he would call, Mommy, Daddy, let me do this. And I don't think that would change. I would probably be arguing with Linda at night when Victor's in bed, which I do now. I'll tell her my feelings, she'd tell me hers. I mean, I don't think it's that much of a difference. I really don't. I, in fact, I think it, it, the, that is consistent. When we were married, and we were married for five years, and during that period of time, we disagreed on things like sex education. You remember those two books I bought? Oh, sure. I bought two books, uh, and I think Victor's father said they were <laughs> pornographic. Oh. Remember I bought some books on sex ed? Yeah, they were very <laughs> graphic. Okay, let's Not put it that way. Not pornographic, but they were very graphic. And he didn't particularly care for that. And mm. I had applied for nursery school. Remember when I applied for nursery school? And you said, don't you think he's too young? And, I, and he started nursery school at three and a half. And I felt that the child was equipped to do it, and he was an only child, and that he should be around other children. Mm -hmm. So what I'm, I mean, we've disagreed and had different expectations in the past. And as Victor said, we argued about it when he went to bed. Yeah. But then we came to some conclusion, Jack, and now Jack we have a unified fund. Jack has done that, too. Jack will want some things for the boys. Now, he wants to demand that each one take an art course or a music course or some kind of a fine arts course or just as an outside activity. Then I, was I would never have done that. I would have let them play football all afternoon. But Jack wanted that done. So I will then support his wanting that done by making sure they get to those classes and carpooling them in the afternoon because he's at work and can't do that, but I'm home. <laughs> so I cooperate with Jack because it's important for him. Yeah. But... That's okay. I think that's, that, that's what he wants, and it's nothing that I am terribly against. It's against, just that I would right. not have gone out and, and sought that. Yeah. But we get to the point, though, Victor, where I think mm -hmm. on certain issues we disagree more, such as the playing downstairs when it's dark or leaving him in the house by himself. Have you ever had a major war about anything? You know, a real disagreement where no matter how much you two said, well, we're going to work it out, that we yeah, didn't, <laughs> you didn't work you, it out. I, I, I'm sure you don't know it. Um, Maybe I shouldn't even tell you this, okay? No, well, tell then tell me. me. <laughs> <laughs> the other night, your son went to the movie and came home at 12 o'clock. By himself? No, with Bobby. Another child? Yes. 12 o'clock at, at night? At night? At night, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh we will have to that. You know what happened? You know, that's not right. That's no, that's well, not right. It's not right according to you. It's you not can right be locked up. Who? Me? <laughs> that's against the law. He's a minor. It's not against the law. Okay. Okay, forget that anyway. But you, yeah, I'm not going to be locked up. You gave your blessing for that. You, that was okay for you? Well, yes. Because he was in your charge at that time, is that right? Yes. Two and boys? I knew who alone? he was with, and the fellow was much older than he was. Yeah, I could take 15, now that I think that he's, he's with. with a 15-year-old. Oh, um, still, 12 o'clock is late. It's late, yeah, but um, I used to stay up much later than that when I was younger than that. That's another thing. Victor's life is much more sheltered than mine. I think that's probably why Linda and I have some difficulty. I, I, I grew up on the streets of New York, and I think I got an education there, whereas her education was much more farm, and her life was much more sheltered. And I sometimes look back at Victor now. I don't want him to do some of the things that I did when I was his age. Um, as a matter of fact, I thought about that 12 o'clock thing, too. Mm -hmm. And I told him about it because I didn't know he was going to be out that late. He went bowling, and I, when I came back, he was gone to the movies. But no big thing. Victor, anyway, this is why Victor would not live with you, though, I must tell you. 
lessons to you. Anyway, um, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Right, I mean, if my <laughs> father, if I was 11 and, and my, my father let me stay out to midnight, I would love to live with my father. Well, I think that's great. Oh, he likes that too, but he also likes the and structure. needs the discipline that his mother gives him. He knows when he's ha had enough, and he knows when his mother uh, gives him enough, even when it comes to me. He's very well adjusted. You see, now Jack takes the boys to all kinds of movies, and I would not take them to half the movies that Jack takes them to. Not only just right. because I don't think the movies are that great to go see, but because I don't want to waste my time in the movies, and, and, and I don't think that's where they should be either. But Jack thinks it's a great source of entertainment. I know, Victor does too. So we the disagree movie. on that. So, when they, they so the when they go to the movies, they go to the movies with Jack, and it was very rare that I take them to the movies. But I will take them into an, uh, an arts and crafts fair, and Jack wouldn't step foot in an arts and crafts fair half the time. So it's like, right. that's why we're living two different lives. And that's Let me ask you something. If your boy said to you tomorrow morning they wanted to go live with their father, considering some of the things that Jack allows them to do, what would your feelings be? I would be probably hurt. I would probably be, be disappointed that they would not want to live with me full time. Oh, not full time, but they would, they would want to live with their father full time. Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, and they didn't want to spend the time with me. But I don't, I would not, I would not feel badly. I know that they would be in good hands and Jack would take good care of them. You know, it's not like that, that they would be missing um, Staying at something. Staying until 12. No, <laughs> I don't mean that. But I think Jack can raise them as well as I can raise them. But I would How like does to Victor feel about sharing his son with Linda's future husband? We'll find out after these messages. It's just uh, Victor asked me the question, I asked you, thank you. And that is if Victor walked in and said, I want to go live with my father, what would I do? And I'd die. I would, my first reaction would be, why doesn't he want to stay with me? I really don't think so. No, my first reaction would be, why doesn't he want to stay with me? Then I think after I calmed down a bit, I would sit down and really try to get a feeling of why he wanted to move with you full time. And if it were sound, I would probably let him go, not feeling that you're going to give him the structure that I do, or even push him in certain areas that I would, but that you are going to love him. So therefore, because of the love, there will be certain things you'll do for him. And also, I think also, too, the fact that I'm about to remarry, mm -hmm. all of my time and energies and thoughts are not 24 hours as they were at one point, because I'm now sharing my time and energies and thoughts with another person. We haven't talked about that. How do you feel about Victor having a stepfather? You know, it's strange if she asked me that now. We never talked about it before. It used to be much more private than you are now. You really don't mind me discussing it? Uh-uh. All right, I have no hang-ups about it. You know what Linda generally does, um, not generally, because she hasn't been too serious with too many guys since we've been divorced, but she's always wanted me to meet whom she's going out with. 
almost like she's subconsciously seeking my approval. And I think she says because Victor's going to be involved. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, I could care less if she met who I was going out with. Uh, as long as that person does not abuse Victor, and I think that should be your concern mm -hmm. as well. You should not care who I associate with. And likewise, I think that, um, I saw Jim on TV on this thing one time, by the way. <laughs> okay, guy, looks like it anyway. Anyway, um, <laughs> I have no objection to it. Uh, Jim, John, Mike, Joe, whoever go you're gonna marry, as long as they don't harm Victor, as long as they're gonna be helpful to Victor, and I think Jim will be, based on discussions we've had in the past, more power to him. Aren't you, you know? jealous, though? Jealous? Yeah. I might have been four years, five years ago. Not even jealous five years ago. I think when we first got divorced for two or three years, there was that hostility still remaining. And I think I might have been bitter. But jealous? No way. Because, you know, I have a feeling that, let's say you got married, yeah. new lady in your life, and for one reason or another, and Victor came. No, oh, okay, 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 sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, and Victor came to live in your little yeah. nest. Excuse me. I mean, I don't think you could deal with that. I think she could. And to be honest, I never said this to her, and I don't even know if you want me to say it now. I think she would not have been disappointed at all if Victor had selected to live with me when she got married with Jim. Not that she does not love him, but I think she would have done it because she knows that Victor loved me and I love Victor, and that she would be reluctant to bring him into something new uh, with Jim. Um, this is my own observation. I don't think she would have minded at all. I think she would not have done it for a reason, well, the reason is your mother. And I don't mm -hmm. think your mother would approve. And I don't think that you would do it for that reason, even if you wanted to. Yeah, but what happens so if you didn't like the lady? Oh, no, now see, it would depend on... That's her problem. No, 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 now wait now. Let's, let's, let's look at this. I don't this. pass Closing. any judgment on no. Jim or anybody. No, it has nothing to do with, in answering Joyce's question... Oh, fine, go ahead. ...about if I didn't like the lady. It would have nothing to do with that as long as Victor was comfortable. Victor Jr. was comfortable in the situation. With the lady. Yeah, and I, I felt the, the child. Yeah. Now, okay. if I didn't like her, it would definitely be based on something that Victor has said or done. Victor okay, has been involved with, with right. someone who, in fact, Victor Jr. likes. I would even say probably in all these years, loves, and they have a relationship. And I'm very satisfied at the things he comes home and he says. In fact, she can get him to do things that I haven't been Amen. able to get him to do, okay, <laughs> as another outside person. But if Victor came home and I saw the unhappiness, right. the sad oh. face, um, there was a... Well, see, I'd have to inspect that a I little closer. That, yeah. And then if it were consistent, because there were problems, uh, there's another child involved there, and I think there was some sibling, or should we say jealousy, very early on in the... To me. But that, but it's your son. Wait, wait, wait. Credits. You have to sit. 